Welcome, we'll start with the second chapter for NCRT class 11th Indian Art and Culture and in this chapter we would be talking about the arts of the Indus, Indus Valley Civilization. Now when we talk about Indus Valley Civilization, the two major things or the two major places that come across our mind are basically Harappa in the north, Mohanjodaro in the south but as of now both are in Pakistan. If we talk about the places from Indus Valley Civilization which are part of India as of now are Lothal and Dhulavir uh, in Gujarat, then you have Kalibangam in Rajasthan, Baltal in Rajasthan, Rupar in Haryana and uh, Rakhigari in Haryana. So basically Rupar in Punjab and Rakhigari in Haryana. So those are the major centers that remain for the Indus Valley civilizations in India. Now what we have seen through this Indus Valley civilization is the various sculptures, seals, uh, potteries that we have found. But the idea here remains is this Indus Valley Civilization was known for its unique planning systems or the planning structure. Along with the planning structure, what was unique for this region was the drainage system. So two things to be kept in mind, the planning systems, the drainage system. So the layout of the city and the drainage system. Besides this, the housing, the market, the storage, the offices, all of those were very, very important to understand. So if you look onto the map of India, towards the west of Rajasthan, parts of Gujarat and the part which is now part of Pakistan has the uh, civilization centers from the Indus Valley civilization. So you have Mohanjodaro, you have Harappa, both of those now in Pakistan. Then in India, as we said, you had Kalibangan in Ra Rajasthan, you have Lothal, you have Dholavar in Gujarat and so on. So those are the major centers for the Indus Valley Civilization. Now under Indus Valley Civilization, you would have the stone statues, you would have the metal statues and then you would have the various seals. So we will understand these one by one. Let's first talk about the stone statues. The statues that were made from the stone were three dimensional. So they had a kind of 3D volume that were seen. Two classic examples here are one is torso in red color, in red sandstone, the other is a beard man in statite. So that's an example of a beard man in statite. This diagram as you can see shows a well formed uh, personality with a well formed nose, uh, half closed eyes, a small mustache and a kind of double shells for the ear with a middle hole that could be seen. So that was a kind of unique picture of a priest who was draped with a shawl moving from the left to the right and the idea was his uh, drape or the shawl was decorated in a kind of trefoil pattern. Uh, this was the statue for the person that was considered as a priest or uh, interpreted as a beard man. Besides that you had torso and torso you had a kind of uh, person who had uh, holes in the neck where you could say he used to wear a kind of uh, necklace uh, or there were kind of socket holes in the neck and there was attachment with the hands and the arms that was seen. The next was bronze casting. The casting of bronze was indeed a very unique idea under Indus Valley Civilization. So what they used to do was they used to prepare the statue with the wax. On the wax they used to have a layer of clay and it was uh, used to dry. Now once it is dried what would happen is the wax would have a coating of the clay. Now this clay pot after being dried would be kept for melting. So the inside wax would start to melt. There would be a kind of small hole that would be pinned and that melted wax would be removed from that clay statue. From the same place where you are removing the melted wax, you would be slowly and gradually pouring the bronze, the melted bronze or the melted metal. Now once you are pouring in the melted metal, you would allow it to settle for a while and finally the upper part of the clay would be removed after the, the metal has set, uh, settled down and you would have a bronze casting that could be seen. It was a very classic method during that time and it was known as lost wax technique because in this process the wax is ultimately lost. Now, the classic figures that were seen for bronze casting during that time was a figure of dancing girl. This was a kind of 4 inch copper figure seen from Mohanjadaro. Uh, it showed bangles on the left hand and bracelets on the right hand. 
So you have a figure of dancing girl here. Then you have a buffalo with uplifted head, back and sweeping horns that were seen again from the metal piece. Similarly, uh, you had a dog that was seen from copper and a bird of lothal that was seen. Bronze figure of the bull from Kalibangan were obtained. You had copper and bronze human figures obtained from Harappa and Mohanjodaro. And during the late Harappa period and the Chalcolithic sites li like Daimabad in Maharashtra, you had very good examples of metal cut structures or metal cast structures which were mainly human structures or animal structures those were seen. So this, under this period you had the development with bronze casting that we had seen as we talked about or compared to the prehistoric period. Finally, you had terracotta. Now, it was mainly seen in a crude form. There was not much development in terracotta that was seen during that time. Some of the remains of terracotta have come up from Kalibangan. You have the example of mother goddess. So, the mother goddess had a kind of beaked nose and pelted eyes that was seen. So, pellet eyes and beaked nose is a classic character of mother goddess. Now, sometimes this could be a kind of direct MCQ for you. Uh, so, just have a good eye on it. Similarly, you had figurines of uh, beard ma males that were seen with coiled hairs. Uh, similarly, horn deities were seen and small uh, toy cards were seen for the kids to play. So those were the terracotta figures that could be seen during that time. Uh, then we have uh, the seals that were obtained. Now as we said the dancing girl was a kind of a bronze structure that was seen during that time. So it was a metal casting. So you had a stone casting, you had metal casting, you had terracotta and then seals. Seals were made mainly of Statite, that is a soft river stone that is seen. Besides that, you also had a gate, chariot, fiance, that's basically a kind of uh, tin glazed pottery that was seen and terracotta. Now, these were used for commercial purposes. You had a 2 by 2 inch square seal that was seen. That was a kind of standard seal. It has pictographic inscriptions. So on one side there were pictographic messages, on the other side you had inscriptions that were seen. Uh, it is made both in gold and ivory in the later period. However, most of it was made in statite that was seen. You had animal figures, uh, figures of bull, elephant, tiger that was seen on one side. Similarly, you had Pashupati seal that was seen. Now this Pashupati seal is a unique seal. So you had a human figure that was cross-legged and sitting with Elephant and tiger on the right side. Now this is important. Sometimes you could be confused here. So you have elephant and tiger on the right, rhino and buffalo on the left and antelopes below the figure. So a man sitting in a cross leg position. So you have elephant and tiger on the right side, rhino and buffalo on the left and antelope sitting below. So that was a classic Pashupati seal that was seen. Uh, as we said, Seals has had figures on one side, inscriptions on other side or inscriptions on both side. The next is pottery. Pottery came in various forms. It could be either plain pottery which was made of red clay which was the most common pottery during that time. You had fine wheel made pottery as well as handmade pottery that was seen. Black painted wares were seen which was having a kind of fine coating with geometric and animal designs. You had painted earthen jars that were seen. Uh, these were basically known for polishing and the geometrical figures that could be drawn. You had polychrome pottery that was very rare during that time. Small vases were seen which had a kind of geometric patterns. These patterns were in red, black, green, rarely uh, white and yellow that were seen. You had incised wares that were seen. These were confined to the base of the pans that were seen. Perforated pottery is one of the very interesting potteries. You had a large hole at the bottom of the uh, pottery and small holes uh, over all the wall of the pottery. The idea was to strain the liquor during that time. And it was also used for straining other liquids in the kitchen. So the, the idea of perforated pottery itself was a very unique concept in the Indus Valley civilizations. Also you had miniature vessels which were smaller than the size of half an inch. So those were some of the developments. Then you had beads and ornaments. Now when it comes to beads and ornaments, what is unique? You had earrings, anklets, uh, griddles that were worn. Then you had jewels that were found from Mohanjodaro and Lothal. Those were mainly the necklaces which were gold or semi-precious. 
you had copper and beads that were seen you had uh, cemetery in uh, farmana in haryana where dead bodies were found along with the ornaments bead industry was seen in chandudaro and lothal so that's again important during that time you had a bead processing industry where you had all the following kind of uh, beads like steatite uh, turquoise lapis lazuli all these beads were found or manufactured at the plants at lothal and chandudar these were in various shapes they could be either in the shape of disc cylinder spear barrel or so on you had also a unique feature where these uh, ornaments were made of the shape of monkeys squirrels or different animals there were spindle and spindle wools in the house that indicated people used to basically spin cloth uh, cotton and wool you had a uh, cinnabar that was used for cosmetics and face paint you had collyrium that was used as eyeliner so those were some of the things that promoted or showed that fashion was indeed very very important during the indus valley civilization people used to maintain different hairstyles and beard so those were again a part of the fashion during that time so that was some of the major things that we talked about during the indus valley civilization how culture flourished and when we talk about culture it was not only the stone but it was also the metal culture and a little of terracotta that came into existence steatite was indeed a very uh, known uh, Uh, thing during that time because it was a kind of soft river stone and you had a uh, ample of water through the indus valley uh, that was flowing through there so you had a lot of steatite that was seen so seal formation beads formation from steatite was indeed important during that time we'll be coming up with more lectures on culture so stay tuned have a great day ahead